Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video, I wanted to share an interview that was done by Famitsu Magazine uh, or Famitsu.com. And this was brought to my attention by Tom Rom. He's also kind of gone through and retranslated some of the article. And I'm going to just read through that interview with you and hit the high points. If you want access to the entire article, it is at Famitsu.com. We have a link to that in the Discord if you're interested in reading all about it. But I wanted to share this with you for a couple of reasons. One, because uh, I wanted to show that, uh, you know, the, the producers, the directors, the developers in general of this game uh, I know that we're pretty harsh critics. Um, we are quick to point out things we love, quick to point out things we hate or don't love so much. Um, and so, you know, I just wanted to share this with you because one, there are some pretty great insights into uh, development of the game, the future of the game, maybe even some spoilers for things to come. But also, um, you know, I wanted to remind everybody, including myself, that, that these these people are humans. And they are trying, and you can, you will see from the answers they give to some of these questions, how much they love this game, how much energy and passion they put into it. And, you know, I think that that is, is something that we should all keep in mind, um, you know, as uh, things come out, right? Because even through the bad times, I can tell you from reading this, they really do care and they are doing their best to make this game as fun and as enjoyable as possible. So the interview was done with Mr. Nomura, who is the creative director of Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. Uh, in the original Final Fantasy VII, he was in charge of main character design, and in the subsequent Final Fantasy VII compilation works, he played a central role in the overall creation of the work, including character design, scenario, and battle. And in the Final Fantasy VII Remake project, he was the director of Final Fantasy VII Remake, and the creative director of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Along with him was Mr. Toriyama. He's the director of Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. He's all, he was also the event planner for the original Final Fantasy VII, event director for Final Fantasy X, and director for the Final Fantasy XIII series, and the co-director for the Final Fantasy VII Remake project. And last, we have Mr. Ichikawa, he is the producer of Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis and also was the producer of the smartphone game Final Fantasy VII The First Soldier. So again, uh, I'm going to be reading kind of just the highest points that Tom Rom pulled from this article. If you want to see the whole thing, come to the Discord and we can link you to it. With that all out of the way, I will get to the interview. So the first question was, first of all, please tell us your honest thoughts on the first anniversary of the service's launch. And Mr. Ichikawa replied, Looking back, it feels like it went by in a flash, and that's my honest impression. When I think back, a lot of things happened, and every month, I was thinking of events and collaborations to give everyone something to enjoy, so it was a very intense year. It felt like I was sprinting a marathon, but I was encouraged by the feedback from our users so many times that it felt like a, quote, marathon with lots of water points. I want to keep running from now on. Mr. Nomura said, even though it's been a year, we feel like it's been going on for much longer. And Mr. Toriyama added, soon after the service started, we added a new guild battle, but new features require a certain amount of preparation time. For example, when creating new 3D graphic resources, preparations start about a year and a half in advance. The interviewer replied, that far in advance, and of note, Mr. Toriyama said, we prepare plots for events and stories about a year in advance, and we start working on feature improvements six months in advance. In addition to that, we do test and play tests for the latest measures, and of course, since the release of the product version, we have been playing with the general public every day. The next question said, looking back on the past year, what is the most memorable thing? To which Mr. Toriyama replied, I guess it would have to be the collaboration with Monster Hunter. In addition to episodes that were not possible in the main game and are connected to the world of Final Fantasy VII, one of the concepts of Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis is to depict episodes in a world different from Final Fantasy VII. But the collaboration with Monster Hunter was the latter event that could never be done in the main game. So then they asked, apart from collaborations, are there any events that left a strong impression on you? Personally, I enjoyed the Valentine's Day event because I got to see the cute side of each character. 
Mr. Toriyama said, For the Valentine's Day event, there's a gondola date scene at the Gold Saucer in the original work, but I thought, if there was a date event outside of the Gold Saucer, it would be something like this. At first, I envisioned a format where you could choose your partner like the gondola date scene in the original work, but I thought that if I did that, you wouldn't be able to see everyone's events, so I went with that format. And Mr. Ichikawa added, the Valentine's Day event's home background featuring the four female characters huddled together, which was available in the season pass, was also very popular. I received a lot of comments about it, which made me really happy. And the follow-up to that was, which event impressed you the most, Mr. Ichikawa? And he replied, personally, I enjoyed the battle events, especially the strong enemy attack series. Among them, the critical threat Sephiroth the Arrival was particularly exciting and I myself have not been able to defeat Crash Sephiroth. So if possible, I would like to rerun it somewhere. The next question uh, basically dealt with the difficulty of boss battles in the main storyline, and Mr. Ichikawa had this to say. As, as for the story battles, as we mentioned in the last official live broadcast, we are working towards making them easier to play. It's balanced so that if you can properly train the weapons handed out at events, you can clear the game. Of course, we've made the final climax a little challenging, but we want to avoid situations where you can't beat the game unless you get a weapon from Gacha. I personally think that that is amazing, and I know that makes a lot of people who are uh, story-driven, or their, their reason for play is story-driven, I, I think that that makes a lot of sense because you do want a little bit of challenge. The next question deals with new players, and I want to take this moment to just say, if you are somebody who is considering starting Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis or has just started, I think this is an amazing time to start. For one, uh, because of the anniversary, they are giving away so many things that are designed to catch up new players. Lots of, um, you know, the items that we need to up upgrade weapons, lots of free weapons, and a lot of them that are quite good, ones that you would want to get. And they are very, very generous with giving out currency and other things you need to get weapons. And so, I think this is a great time. But the question was, uh, so many people who are starting out can clear the main story battles if they train their characters to a certain extent. And the response was, from Mr. Ichikawa, yes, however, while we want beginners to be able to take steps to become stronger, we also think it is absolutely necessary to have challenging battles for those who have mastered RPGs. So we hope that you will enjoy battling strong enemies and events. And Mr. Toriyama added to that, in story battles, the recommended overall strength and other values are generally lowered significantly across the board. Because of that, I think that people who are just starting out will be able to beat the game without too much trouble. Apart from that, there are still cases where you run out of materials when developing weapons, so we plan to continue improving that area. And then the interviewer added to it, uh, yeah, weapon materials are appreciated, however, I also tend to run out of stamina potions. And Mr. Ichikawa said, regarding stamina, when you improve your stamina, you run out of gill, and when you get rid of gill, you get stamina, and so on. We want to respond to the voices of those who say that there aren't enough stamina potions at the moment, and we are constantly thinking of ways to make the game easier to play, such as increasing the opportunities to obtain stamina potions through various campaigns. Moving along, the interviewer asked, The character level cap is currently at 80, and there are currently no character streams beyond that level. But are there any plans to raise the character level further in the future? And Mr. Ichikawa said, If we raise the level cap too quickly, the gap with new players will become larger. So we are basically going to raise it as necessary while looking at the overall balance of the forces and the difficulty of the quest. If we do raise the cap, we are thinking of implementing a set of easy-to-earn quests and training events such as the Golden Bomb Rush. So we will make a separate announcement at that time. Therefore, we would like you to continue collecting memories for each character. I think that's pretty big. Uh, for a while, they were implementing level increases at a pretty regular clip. Uh, and then when it wasn't regular, it was about double the amount of time. They also doubled the increase of the level from we were getting level increases of five. And then the last one was a, a big 10 push from 70 to 80. So uh, I like this. And again, for new players, uh, they are trying to close that gap, which I think makes a lot of sense. Uh, it does. Now, the next portion of this interview may contain some spoilers. So if you're somebody who doesn't want to hear about things that might be coming up or any other types of story spoilers or anything like that, just take note, there might be spoilers coming up. 
For the first question of this part of the interview, the interviewer asked Mr. Nomura what the most memorable thing for him was, and he said, for me, it would be the appearance of young Sephiroth, as he is the symbolic character for this title. And then a little bit later, the interviewer said, Glenn appeared in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but he was also quite different. Will the circumstances that led to Glenn becoming like that be depicted in the future? And Mr. Toriyama said, it may be depicted somewhere, but that's a little further down the line. The next question was the mission of Glenn and the other three and young Sephiroth in the first soldier arc ended with a sad outcome in many ways. Please tell us as much as you can about future developments. And Mr. Toriyama replied, the story we're going to depict is set in a timeline that's been around for less than a year since young Sephiroth finished his mission with Glenn and the others. The spotlight will be on young Sephiroth who will visit a certain area in the Wutai area where Angeal will join him as a colleague. The story will depict Sephiroth and Angeal as well as other characters and will depict Sephiroth's further growth. The next obvious question was Sephiroth and Angeal, will Genesis also be involved? To which Mr. Nomura laughingly said, that's a secret. But Mr. Ichikawa added, I think the inner workings of the young Sephiroth will continue to be one of the points of interest in the story. I think the relationship between Sephiroth and Angeal will also be a highlight, and of course, Angeal will be playable. That is pretty big news, not something, uh, obviously something that we kind of thought was coming up, but we don't really still know what the order is. Obviously, we're all still waiting on somebody like Sid as well, so I'm very, very excited to hear about this. And the next question covered something that's also on a lot of players' minds. The interviewer said, oh, Angeal is finally playable. I'm curious about the relationship between Angeal and the Buster Sword. I understand that there will also be an episode about Masamune, the weapon that symbolizes Sephiroth. Mr. Nomura replied, As for Masamune, I was actually consulted about how to handle him in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. It would be unnatural to have him in the open all the time while moving around the field, and he couldn't carry it on his back like Cloud, so we were like, what should we do? The next question uh, more of a statement leading to a response was, I remember that at the beginning of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, uh, when he went on a mission with Sephiroth, he didn't have Masamune outside of battle. And Mr. Nomura replied by saying, that's right, at that time, I told the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth team members, Masamune actually has a secret and that mystery will be revealed in Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. Mr. Toriyama added to that by saying, I also plan to draw a reason for the depiction of Masamune disappearing when moving on the field but appearing in battle. More specifically, there is also an episode about how Masamune was created and why Sephiroth ended up obtaining it. The next series of questions had to do with, uh, you know, what are the most common things that you, you've heard from people as far as recommendations or what they're wanting for the game, uh, which most of that has been addressed in these updates, that's why. You're seeing some of these updates as far as the AI, um, you know, with battle and the recommended gear and all that stuff. Um, then they get into a little bit of a conversation about gear down to the question that says, are there many designs that were not adopted, not only for clothing, but also for weapons? And Mr. Ichikawa answered that by saying, there were quite a few weapons. However, weapons and clothing are considered as a set. So in terms of variations, there are more clothing. And then the interviewer followed up with, is there anything you would like to release in the future for clothing? And Mr. Nomura, uh, he laughed and, and he said, maybe next summer we can release a swimsuit ferret. And Mr. Ichikawa said, I wonder if everyone will be happy. Kind of funny. Uh, they are, uh, you know, they're aware of the things that we think and, you know, kind of what's going on. And I think it's good to see that they, they have a pretty good sense of humor about this. Uh, skipping down through the interview a little bit, uh, the next question was about ultimate weapons. Can you tell us about the new weapon type ultimate weapon that will be appearing this time? Mr. Ichikawa had this to say, Ultimate weapons are not meant to be superior versions of existing weapons, but are made to be an element that broadens the range of strategies while making use of existing weapons. Ultimate weapons have two major features. The first is the equipment effect. Each character has an equipment slot dedicated to their ultimate weapon, and each character sets a dedicated weapon in it. When equipped, 
In addition to increasing parameters, rise abilities are also activated. Ultimate weapons rise abilities not only have useful general effects, but also have special unique effects. The second feature is that each ultimate weapon can use a new ability, the ultimate command ability or UC ability, which is unique to each weapon. These UC abilities are quite unique. Moreover, UC abilities do not consume ATB and can be used a certain number of times. However, even though they can be used a certain number of times, they require a recast time once activated, so they cannot be used repeatedly. The idea is to use them while considering the combination with C abilities and R abilities and watching the timing. And the last question that I want to cover in this video concerns the possibility of a new numbered collaboration. And the question was this, finally, could you tell us about your aspirations for this game as it continues on through its 1.5th and 2nd anniversaries? And Mr. Ichikawa said this, First of all, I would like to say thank you to everyone who has played this game over the past year. The one year anniversary event is about to begin, but we on the development team are not only preparing for the second part of the first soldier arc, but also preparing new collaborations with numbered Final Fantasy titles and other events so that everyone can enjoy the game even after the first anniversary. We will do our best to continue on to the third and fifth anniversaries, rather than the 1.5th and second anniversaries, so we hope you will continue to enjoy Final Fantasy Ever Crisis. That is very inspiring for me. I love that they are planning this game. I mean, they believe that it will be going for five years. I mean, maybe more than that, but this is not something that they're just like, you know, in the beginning, people have said, oh, this game was just an advertisement, uh, you know, for the newer Final Fantasy games. Um, and, you know, I do think that it's it's a lot more than that. I don't think that, that was ever what it was planned for, or at least that was not the sole purpose. I mean, the fact that they were talking about the fact that it takes a year or a year and a half in some scenarios to, you know, plan things, to look at story arcs. I think that tells us a lot and I'm really excited to hear that answer. Mr. Toriyama added to that, although we have just celebrated the first anniversary, the planning team has already started talking about the second anniversary. He laughed about that. We are considering various things, such as what the next motif should be. We hope you will enjoy the next anniversary and by that time, information about the final work of the Final Fantasy VII Remake project may start to come out. So we hope you will get excited together. And Mr. Nomura said, as Toriyama said, we recently discussed the second anniversary. Talking about the second anniversary means that of course preparations are underway for everything leading up to that point, and the first anniversary will also be a major milestone, but we have already prepared a number of measures, so please look forward to them. I think that the first anniversary will be very well cared for for new players and those returning, so I hope that you will take this opportunity to play. Also. There are people who will play this while waiting for the final installment of Final Fantasy VII Remake Project, and there are quite a few whose main battlefield is Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. So I feel that we have been able to create a new way to enjoy Final Fantasy VII over the course of a year. It will continue to be even more enjoyable in the future, so I hope that those who have enjoyed it so far and those who will play it in the future will look forward to it. And that was the last answer of the interview. Um, and again, I know that there are going to be people who, you know, probably skipped this video or skipped through it and they thought it was boring. But I know that there are enough of you who really are interested in this stuff, you know, who want to go in depth, see kind of behind the scenes. I think interviews like this are a really great opportunity to do that. And so I really wanted to share that with you. Thank you to Tom Rom for bringing this to my attention and for retranslating it further than what it was already translated to, uh, just to really try to make it more accurate and more uh, clear on what it was that they were trying to say. Because the original interview, uh, you know, the responses and stuff were in uh, Japanese. So I definitely appreciate that. I always owe a lot of thanks to Tom Rom for his help. That's everything for this video. Subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.